Um, hi everybody, my name is Xiang Lin. I've, I'm born and raised in China. One of the few real Beijingers who's still living in Beijing at this point. I get partly educated in the States, partly educated in Beijing. Um, and I'm working for a company called Hulai. Um, the name Hulai means um, not playing by the role. It's, uh, it, we're trying to attract young audience, young male audience in China. And so far we've been doing pretty well uh, in, in, in China market. Um, we are, we are, we are very cautiously in the publishing business. We are, we are focusing on our niche. That's why uh, what I can promise today is that I'm going to talk about the market. I'm going to talk about what we believe. And at the end, we will tell you, be careful. So, <laughs> All right. This is a picture that I captured from um, uh, China Daily. I, I took it from China Daily. This is a picture of people riding on subway. And you can tell that this is a time when the, the subway is extremely non-busy, like off-peak times. And normally during the peak hour, everybody is standing like, like, like a sardine, um, can of sardines. So this is not really what you normally see at a peak time. Um, what you can see is that people in China are seriously playing um, mobile games, and the game trend is growing very, very fast. Um, today, I'm going to quickly talk about my company. I'll talk about the market trend, the mobile market size, its growth, and then also how to compare mobile uh, game versus PC game. Also, what kind of contents are selling in China? What are people paying? And what are the games that, what genres are hot these days? At the end, I will share some data about our pay rate, our art pool, and uh, where our whales come from. Um, we will talk, I'll talk about whole life strategy. We are looking for global partners. And at the end, I have a list of questions of, uh, that I think we both need to ask, not just us, um, not just you, but everybody who's going from your cash cow country to a new territory. There, there's a long list of questions that we want to ask together. Okay, this is the Apple, uh, Apple data. So Apple in year 2012, in the first, second quarter of 2012, Apple sold 35.1 million iPhones and 11.7 .7 million iPads. What's amazing is that China contributed a record high of uh, about 20% of revenue from this market. Um, I, 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 I met with some of the Apple guys in China about, they've been working there for 10 years. They said that five years ago, things were not nearly, not nearly in this scale. So we're talking uh, about growing from a almost neglectable number to 20% of Apple market share. Another thing that you can tell is that China is still very much focusing on hardware. Um, we will get to, that part, uh, get to that part later. But this is also uh, a data coming from Flurry analysis. China so far has been the number one for new iPhone and Android activations. It has surpassed US in the last quarter. Um, about smartphone, it's really a map of the China economy. When people say China, they, I mean, it feels like they're talking about one country, but the reality is there are cities like Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, the first, we call it the first tier cities. The income, the, the average income is comparable to the developed world countries. For example, Beijing and Shanghai both are ranked in the top 10 most expensive um, cities to live for expats. So if you're an expat, you're going to work in China, make sure you ask for enough compensation from the company. Um, if you look at the, the map here, you have a, we have a spot in Beijing, and then in the Shanghai area, and then Guangdong area. Those are the most economically developed uh, regions in China. And most of the smartphones are concentrated there, and actually 50% um, are from there. Um, Another interesting fact is that in Beijing, every one in every nine people owns an iOS device, and this is not exaggerating. You can see it in my house and also in the subway everywhere. What people don't realize is that what population means. I'll give you some re re reference number. 
So in Beijing, the official published number is in Beijing, one city, there's about um, close to 30 million people in Beijing. That's the official published number. Um, in year 2010, there was a new policy from China, China, uh, Chinese Ministry of Health saying that everybody who lives in Beijing and Be Beijing vicinities, their kids, even if they don't have hukou, the registration, they can bring their kids for free vaccine. So based on that number of vaccines accepted in the region, um, the, the Census Bureau estimated there are 50 million people living in the Beijing vicinity. What does that mean? Um, in, in Vietnam, the whole country is 90 million people. And among the 90 million people, there are one third of them has internet connection. And now we're talking about Beijing, one city, one crazy city has that many people. So it is definitely a market that nobody can ignore. Um, oh, go going back to this page, uh, also another trend is that there will be more and more iOS and Android devices spreading outward from the most economic, uh, economically developed regions all the way inland. And the, if you look at the China map, it looks like a, a rooster. The rooster tail part is where um, economy is less developed. It will take a while for them. Um, the, the China mobile game, game user base is growing steadily. So this is the, um, the number, or uh, the total number right now in Q, uh, it, it, this is estimated by iMedia Research. And the estimated number is about 190 million people. And this is the mobile game market size um, forecast. Well, not really forecast, but this is the estimation. Um, again, I personally believe that market research data is interesting until you actually get your hands in the market. And you will see something quite dramatic different from the numbers in paper. Um, here, this slides, I want to give you a um, rough comparison about the mobile market and PC market. Um, a research study published by Pearl Research recently is, I mean, it, the research is very um, straightforward and you can actually verify it. There are top five gaming companies that are public, public traded in, uh, in the stock market and their, their aggregated aggregated revenue, the top five, is about 5.3 billion US dollar. And if we go back one page, we look at the quarterly, the, um, the mobile market compared to PC market, it's still relatively small. And this slides also show that Chinese users are paying for games. Um, so I constantly get US developers, my friends, ask me, is there real money in China? And the answer is absolutely yes. People are paying. Um, here, this slide shows that the uh, male-female ratio um, of mobile gamers. If we look, uh, reverse back to the PC games, you can also see even more extreme percentages. Most of the game players and game um, payers, they are male um, boys. Um, that's why um, Tencent buying Riot Games publishing League of Legends is such a good deal for both of them. Um, you can also see that, uh, you can also see it from the other way around. Female uh, gamers, like anywhere else, is underserved. Here, this slides also from, uh, this also from iResearch, talking about the paying games versus non-paying, payers versus paid games or non-paid games. Um, let me go, so the, the red part is paid, uh, in the pie is the paid games. The other way, uh, all the way going there, it's um, test trial games. So basically you can trial, and then if you really like it, you can pay additional. And then um, free games and pay by virtual goods, or pay, you pay by ex expansion pack. So this is the distribution of paying versus non-paying games. Here it's, um, um, it's a data from App Annie. This is also a very interesting uh, slide. I got a lot of questions. I, I hope I can have some of the answer for this, but not all. Um, iOS and um, Google in China is, uh, is more brand aware. 
So iOS has a much more download rate at this point. And right now, iOS, uh, iOS games, um, China contributed 18% of worldwide uh, game download. However, in the revenue chart, China is not on the list. Um, consistently, US, Japan, and UK are ranked at the, uh, rev at the top three countries by revenue, which means that when it gets to game, when it gets to mobile games specifically, um, there is still uh, some way to go for Chinese users to learn how to pay. I mean, Apple have done a great job, but there is a longer way to go. I mean, um, for, for companies that are counting on China mobile market to make huge money, um, they need to be more patient. This is um, a slide I captured when I prepared for the, this deck. It's one day snapshot of the Chinese ILS um, app store. Um, what's interesting is that in the top 20, uh, top in the first 20 top grossing list, three of them are apps and the other th 17 are games. The three, three apps are very consistently navigation apps. And you can explain that in China, the, the people who, are, who can afford cars, they are willing to pay. And GPI, GPS app is consistently uh, on top of the chart. If we exclude GPS uh, apps, the free versus paid games are um, in the top 10, it's one out of the 10. Um, and then among all the top 20, four versus um, 13. So basically about 30% of the games are, f are paid game that made to the top chart. The other remaining 70% are, are freemium model games. And we're talking about top grossing list at this point. Um, also, if you look at the developer, again, th about 30% of the developers, game developers, uh, are global big players. Um, and the other remaining 70% that made the list are local developers. We're happily to be there um, on that day. So just to remind you guys, the number five is our game, Hulai Three Kingdom. It's our bread and butter game uh, till now, uh, uh, still our best game. Um, some data, data about uh, our, we are, our pay ratio is roughly one-to-one -one on iOS and Android. Actually, the, uh, the accumulated uh, is 0 0.9 versus one. Uh, iOS is slightly lower, but um, because our number of iOS users are a lot higher, and then we actually spent more money acquiring users on iOS platform, that's why um, it is very safe to say that the pay ratio at this point is one-to-one. The ARPU data, ARPDAU, is four to one, roughly four to one. And that's what we have seen on the same game. Um, so the conclusion is if you have limited engineering resource today and, and then you want to make some money, then focus on iOS in year 2012. Again, things are happening so fast in China. Um, one of our uh, one of our belief is that we, you have to be constantly prepared for change. Um, so right now, this data only represent 2012. I think things will change as the uh, Android market, the payment system, and the user acquisition channels are getting more, uh, more so sophisticated and more mature. Um, just to recap, China's smartphone market is getting bigger and bigger and faster than we we all expect it. Nobody can expect um, China would contribute 20% of Apple revenue. If we talk about that five years ago, nobody can ever believe it. Now it's happening. Um, Chinese already pay games, play games, and they are paying for games. And that data is supported by the PC model. So League of Legends, a lot of the Western games are making big bucks in China. Um, mobile users, will they will learn how to pay uh, for high quality content. This is just Think how things are happening. This is a trend. Nobody can reverse that. Um, currently, in 2012, the top mobile game in China earns much less than U.S. top mobile games. One of the questions that I constantly get asked is, "How much can you get? Can you make as a top five, top one game in China?" We know how much money that U.S. developers can make. Um, the answer is, I'm not even kidding. The answer is, it varies by um, by the month. And it's, it highly depends on the Apple policy. 
um, in in tw 2011, um, in the early times when Apple opened the uh, App Store in China, they only accept U.S. dollar credit card, and that's a big phase uh, of Chinese developers. And because the game payer, uh, because of gamers, they have to find U.S. credit card in order to buy in-game virtual goods. So the fraud was fraud percentage was really high. Also, the pay rate was low at that time. Um, and then the next stage in November, Apple uh, allowed Chinese users to use Chinese debit card, uh, debit card to pay for, uh, to associate with their iTunes account and start paying. That's when we see uh, dramatic growth in our revenue. Um, and then the fraud percentage uh, came down dramatically also with that new policy. Um, later this, later, I mean, in Q2 this year, actually in April this year, Apple changed the payment policy again. Um, they only allow local credit card and debit card to be used associated with the Chinese iTunes account. So when that policy happened, we, we did see uh, a decrease in the total revenue. Before, before this new policy came up, the published number is that the top game in China can get $1 million US dollar um, after revenue share with Apple. That's the, uh, this is the published number. Um, after this new policy, the, came, the number came down. We believe that with good content, um, user will start coming back to pay for the game, but the demand will need to, a little bit time to build up, and also people would get get to uh, get used to the notion that really paying for the game. So, um, with the speed of how things are changing to the right direction, we we firmly believe that Chinese market is solid for the people who are prepared. Um, going back to genres. Um, we see needs, to, solid demands in kids' education because Chinese around the world, um, they're really big on education. So um, kids' education around her is still um, underdeveloped and there's no clear leader in that market. Um, female genre is very underdeveloped, um, but that's, a, that's an area as our company, we're gonna stay away for now. And also um, we see most of the competition coming from local players. Um, what we believe is that at this point, um, Hulai has about uh, 400 employees. Um, and we are a social web and mobile game developer. So we believe that content is the king. Um, our game, we're, we're focusing on games that are monetizing very well among male, male users who are already trained to pay for games. And we're looking at games that have um, high R pool in general. And we want to focus on these three screen um, linked games. And we, we use data driven game design and operation. Uh, all of our games, when we, when we do the beta test, close beta test, we believe it is about, uh, about 30% done. The game actually evolves as the user get engaged. So that's why that's exactly why what we want to find long-term partners to, to partner with for our games getting outside of china or for your games getting inside china the game needs to grow with the user demand it's not when you sell a product or an iphone it's it's, it's hardware it's not it's nothing like the hardware um, we believe in innovation um, in 2009, when everybody was, make, was making farm wheel games, Hulai created the first hotel-based um, social game. And in 2000, and at, the, at the end of 2010, Hulai is the first social game company at that time to combine web game, um, the high monetization, uh, high um, engagement. And, and also we believe that um, for the healthy human emotions, there is playing with your friend for fun, and also there is competing with your um, opponent that you find, or strangers online. So our game was very engaging that we always focus on the love-hate relationship. Love drive more users, and hate create higher R pool. So this is, <laughs> and yeah. So this is what we believe, and then we have been every single step. We are the first one to taking the, the step in that genre. Right now, we believe that um, the mobile, uh, the the, rec the traditional social game, is 
is very hard to monetize in China with the high user acquisition cost and the high channel cost. And, and that's why we took our successful game and we're the first one to take a successful large scale social game to mobile. And immediately we became number one um, in we became number one in China on iOS platform. And our game Hulai Three Kingdom made the number one um, in App Rewind year 2011. That's why one of the things we believe deeply is innovation. You have to be one step ahead of the market, not too much, just one step ahead of the market. And um, and we also believe in business model innovation. Um, if we go back a few slides, um, actually, I'm not going to go back there. So if you look at the normal app store chart in US and most of, the most of the countries in the world, you will see at least two poker or slot, at least two, if not four, poker slot related um, games on the top grossing chart. But China is not the case. So um, very rarely a poker related game are in the top 10 chart. And what's interesting is you don't see Zynga, Zynga on the list. I hope there's nobody from Zynga in this audience. Um, that's, the, that's what I call uh, knowing the local market and, and knowing um, the com local competition. Also, what's important is the rule and regulation. What's considered to be gambling in China is, is strictly controlled. Um, but we are making our own poker game. That's, um, that everything is virtual good based. There's no, um, no non-wager. We are clearly stay within the government uh, safe zone. So that's why knowing the local market and doing, doing business model innovation is what we firmly believe. We do want to invest in long-term success. We have a technology team that we built up doing uh, in-house um, game, game data analysis. We call it business intelligence group. Um, the team are recruited from the top game developers around the world and in China. And we have our uh, people. And also we believe in long-term partnership. Um, because game itself is, is, not a, is not a package group product, we need partners to help you understand local market. And we need long-term investment. For us, we want to focus on China, and that's our home base. We want, to be the, we want to be the social and web game and mobile company that knows about China market the best. And growing from China, out of, outside of China, the next step, next wave is Asia. And then the last, but not the least step is the world. That's not in the order of where the money is actually for now. But this is what we believe that what we can achieve and accomplish. Um, and we, everywhere we go, we had accidental success. So our game was featured in Korea um, by Apple, and that drove us a lot of users. But because we didn't understand the market enough, uh, we, uh, we made reasonable amount of money, but um, there, there are things that long-term, that things that contribute to long-term success that we wish we have done earlier in that time. So everywhere we go, we want to make sure that we invest in the market and truly deeply understand the market when we, go, when we enter the market. For everywhere else, we want to partner with the best in the world. Um, at the last one is we want to stay humble and hungry and, this is, and stay focused. For every startup, there's a hundred things you can do. There's many, many countries uh, you can enter, a lot of them with money. But where you can go with your limited uh, engineer resource, how many people you're going to put in there, how, mu how much those people cost you, and how much you're going to earn potentially after the, the revenue share with your publishers. This is the question you always have to answer. And at the end of the day, once you earn the money or not, does that really contribute to your long-term success? Does it contribute to your core value? Um, does it really add value to your company valuation at the end for the next round or potentially IPO? Those are the questions you have to answer before you take the move. So um, the question is, is China for you? Again, we only selectively publishing games. Um, I just wanted to let you know you have one minute. Oh, OK. All right, <laughs> all right. So uh, we selectively publish games only. So I'm not here trying to tell everybody, hey, come to China, we're gonna publish your game. We're not gonna do that. And uh, we, we have a very tight focus. 
So here, what I want to ask you is, do you want to be a content publisher or do you want to be a content developer? Um, those are not necessarily have the same focus. And do you want to be your regional best or do you want to be the, uh, the global leader? It, it, either answer is fine, but you have to find your own identity. And what are you really, really good at? Are you really good at um, user interaction innovation like um, Angry Birds or uh, Cut the Ropes or you know all kinds of things, but what are you really good at? How does that play? And then the next question is, is more about China. Do you have the right content for the country? And um, if you have League of Legends, you know, um, World of War Tanks, then that's the right kind of game for China market for now. Um, do you have the right people for China? Are you willing to hire them and put them on your payroll? And do you have, um, do you plan to use China as a development center? I have seen quite a few very solid US com companies building a development center in China with, with the dual hope of uh, uh, opening China market. At the end of the day, they, uh, that become a development center only. And the last is, do you have enough friends in the area, in the gaming industry, in the government? Do you know the policy? Do you know what are the trend of the policy? And at the end of the day, um, how much ex success do you expect entering the market? Do you expect quick success or um, quick money? Are you really focusing in that market? So that's, um, that's my favorite animal, Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> I, like it, I really, really like it because t Panda is a, is a China animal. But Disney, I mean, with, a, with great respect, Disney were able to turn this cartoon into a word um, phenomenon and sell it back to China, making a huge amount of money. So if you have a game like that, that China is your place in the world, of course. And that's it for now. Um, do we still have time for a um, question? We don't, I'm afraid, have time for questions, although I imagine some better. of the folks in the audience will corner you on the way out okay. and ask their questions then. Thank you very much, Sean, for coming here and talking to us about this. No problem. Thanks, everybody. So give us a few minutes.